Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, the latest details into the capture of a convicted killer who was on the run for nearly two weeks. What police are saying about his discovery. And let's look out there with live cam. Not too bad. We're starting your day at 77 degrees, but we're a little excited because we have chances of rain in our area and more throughout the week. Hi, good morning. It is September 14th. Happy Thursday to you. I'm going to start right with Mike because yay, we're going yeah. to get some rain. It is beautiful and woke up this morning, looked at my phone on the KSAT weather app radar and was like, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm finally going to get some rain in my backyard. So not everybody's going to be seeing it, but it, it is nice. And so the good news is we have rain and the better news is we have more rain in the forecast. Nothing is showing up over there on the northwest side as of yet, but take a look at radar right now up around uh, just to the north of Austin Cedar Park area. Big cells moving on through there here in town. There's the uh, right around Bernie stage and just there on the I-10 and the far northwest corner of Bear County getting a pretty good light show up there might be even awakened by some of the uh, cracks of thunder and a decent downpour, but that's moving through fairly quickly. Now, as far as further up to the north, there is a flood advisory in the extreme northern portion of Gillespie County right there. Notice how that cells just loops back on through did even produce a little bit of small hail and that dumped some pretty good rain. So that flood advisory way up there, northern portion, almost out of our viewing area of Gillespie County does have the flood advisory up until 630 and then further down to the southwest. We've got a few more showers if you are heading uh, down 35, you're going to run into some rain even on the west side of town right there. Already starting to see a little bit of rain. This will die down, then it's going to fire back up. So we'll have kind of a lull in the action midday temperature right now. Yeah, it's it's fairly warm out there. We're still eight degrees above normal, still have a fair amount of humidity. As a matter of fact, the humidity has gone up even over the past couple of days. So slight bit of a uh, heat index to deal with this morning. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. Nice to see with these lower temperatures, you know, air conditioning units aren't just cranking it out all the time. So once again, a green energy conservation day with CPS energy and you can always scan that QR code throughout the rest of today. 79 at 10 o'clock, 87 at noon. So we get the lull in the action, maybe one or two storms firing up by late this afternoon, but then a better chance then going into tonight, looks like another one of these clusters of storms that's going to be developing in the overnight hours. Then we go into tomorrow and still tomorrow night looks like the best chance for some rain. Will it be a damp football game on Friday night? And what about the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph. All right. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a man is fighting for his life after being shot in the back. This happened on the city's west side. Now, San Antonio police say a man in his 20s was shot in his back below the neck around 10 last night on Wiseman near Highway 151. Police say the victim had on latex gloves and was possibly breaking into vehicles. Now, witnesses saw a car drive away after that man was shot. Right now, police do not have any suspect information. Also new this morning, a man shot multiple times in his chest after a fight with another man also happening on the city's west side. Police say the shooting happened just after 1130 last night. The man got into a fight with another man and was shot multiple times in his chest. Police do not have a description of this suspect. The victim was taken to the hospital also in critical condition. Community members in the Northeast Independent School District are raising concerns about one of the recent appointees to its School Health Advisory Council. Now, Crystal Keene is a registered nurse qualifying her for the committee, but is also married to a convicted Capitol rioter, according to federal records. Now, her husband, Matthew Mazzocco, continued to post con controversial material on social media even after being released from federal custody. Right now on our website at KSA.com, we have that full story, including what Keen had to say to those at NEISD who are raising those concerns. San Antonio City Council members are finalizing tweaks to the city budget by adding more money for animal care services and adding around the clock coverage from a new mental health team. Now, a proposed fund that in part could help pay for trips out of state for women to get legal abortions caused the most controversy. Now, today, the council will vote whether to include it in the final version of the budget. It's a lot that's going into the new city budget, and we're going to have a full breakdown for you on our website at kset.com. Just look for this article on our homepage. 
Now to the new details about the capture of a convicted killer on the run for nearly two weeks after escaping a Pennsylvania prison. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more about how he was able to evade police for so long. This morning, the convicted murderer who escaped a Pennsylvania prison is filling in the blanks, revealing how he avoided capture for two weeks, surviving on watermelon and drinking water from a stream while burying his bodily waste in the woods to avoid detection. Subject is in custody, confirmed subject is in custody. Authorities say Danilo Cavalcante admitted during four hours of questioning that law enforcement got so close, officers almost stepped on him three times during the manhunt. He said on multiple occasions, law enforcement officers almost stepped on him. We were only five or six feet away. And Cavalcante revealing how he got that clean-shaven look thanks to a backpack he stole. He described that the backpack he had obtained a razor in it, and that's how he got clean-shaven. Cavalcante telling authorities his end game was to carjack someone and get to Canada using a rifle he stole from a homeowner days earlier. Cavalcante escaped a Philadelphia area prison on August 31st, days after a jury convicted him of killing his ex-girlfriend. The exhaustive search through rural areas finally came to an end yesterday, 30 miles from the prison, after Cavalcante was detected by a plane with a thermal imaging camera around 1 a.m. Due to the weather, search crews decided to follow him and move in after sunrise. They were able to move in very quietly. They had the element of surprise. Police say Cavalcante tried to get away as officers moved in, but the Customs and Border Control team released a canine named Yoda to capture him. The dog sub subdued him. The four-year-old Belgian Malinois leaving a visible bite mark on Cavalcante's scalp. Meanwhile, for the first time in days, schools and businesses in the area will be reopened today as local residents breathe a sigh of relief. Happy that it's over. We weren't sure how it was going to end up. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. A bizarre chain of events playing out in day seven of suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment trial. The day ended with Ken Paxton's lawyers making a sudden motion for the impeachment articles to be dismissed. Now, the defense team then changing their mind and retracting that motion. The motion would have needed the approval of 16 senators. Another turn of events, Laura Olson, the woman who was allegedly involved in an affair with Paxton, was set to testify, but was then deemed unavailable to testify. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who is presiding over this trial, said lawyers from both sides agreed on Olson's status. A federal appeals court will hear arguments about Texas's floating border buoys on October 5th. The buoys were installed as part of Operation Lone Star back in July. Now, since then, the Department of Justice has sued the state and argues that Texas had no authorization to put them there in the first place. Governor Greg Abbott has argued that Texas has the constitutional authority to keep the buoys in the Rio Grande. An investigation is underway after police body cam footage revealed remarks made by a Seattle officer following the death of a 23-year-old woman. An officer's body camera captured the phone call where he discussed what happened. In the audio, you can hear him laughing and saying that the victim had limited value and the city can just write a check to deal with the incident. The union president of the Seattle Police Officers Guild was reportedly on the other end of the call. The county prosecuting attorney's office is conducting a criminal review of the crash and of the body cam video. Time now is 438 and 77 degrees for now. Now when it comes to extreme weather, it's always important to stay prepared. After the break, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz gives you tips to make sure you have the tools to always be ready. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking over at I-10 at Crossroads where things are moving, but you know, just a few vehicles on the roadway at this hour. And let's look out there with live cam. Not too bad starting at 77 degrees, but we are excited about those chances of rain all over our viewing area, especially towards the end of the week. We can't wait. We'll be right back. Extreme weather can bring rain, flooding, ice, and power outages. A portable generator can help power what you need, but only if it fires up when you need it. Generators can go months or even years without being used. But keep in mind, the fuel in them can go bad over time. That can clog the engine's carburetor or fuel lines, and it may not start when you actually need it. So Consumer Reports Paul Hope has some easy tips. To prevent clogged fuel lines, keep the generator's fuel tank empty and have at least 10 gallons of fresh gasoline on hand. 
Always add a fuel stabilizer to your stored gas to help it last as long as possible. Store your generator in a clean, dry, ventilated spot that's not attached to the house. This will prevent odors and toxic fumes from getting into your house. Storing a generator in your home or too close to it is dangerous because not only can vapors escape from gasoline, but gasoline is flammable and that can start a fire. If your budget allows, Hope says the safest and easiest way to use your portable generator is something called a transfer switch that an electrician installs alongside your main circuit breaker. A transfer switch lets you power whole circuits on your home's panel without running individual extension cords to each appliance. They also let you power things that may not have a plug like a furnace or a water heater. In fact, he installed something similar called an interlock device in his own house. He says it makes facing a power outage a little less stressful. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 443 and 77 degrees for now. Canyon Lake water levels reaching a record low after the break. Why one business owner in the area is asking for your help. In this morning's GMA First Look, the moment American explorer Mark Dickey is hoisted to safety after 12 days trapped in a Turkish cave. It is amazing to be above ground again. I was underground for far longer than ever expected with an, with an unexpected medical issue. The 40-year-old rushed to a medical tent for treatment after becoming stuck more than 3,400 feet underground, suffering a life-threatening emergency during a cave mapping expedition. The only feeling that I think I have is this this curve of will I live. Now Dickie's parents thanking the rescuers who helped. It was a, a real emotional roller coaster. The situation with Mark, how seriously he was hurt, how deep and, and hard to get to him it was. And coming up at 7 a.m., Michael Strahan goes one-on-one -on -one with caver Mark Dickey. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And the weather is a tiny bit cooler, and we may be expecting some rain today. However, the drought is strong, and water levels at Canyon Lake are now at a record low. Businesses that depend on the lake are going dry, too. Our Jonathan Goto with why the one thing they need to survive is you. We can do kayaking, we can do paddle boarding. You know, there's lots of great restaurants out here. Sam Painter, a business owner on Canyon Lake, says in spite of record low water levels, Canyon Lake has been and still is open for business. You can come out and barbecue with your family. You can hit a kayak. You can hit a paddle board. You can come out here with a captained boat without a problem and still be safe. Painter says Canyon Lake has been home for the last 21 years and says the canyon has seen low levels before and has been able to bounce back. The last time that I saw it out here growing up was going to be around the uh, 2011 area and that was just it, it, we had a drought like this and then we got lucky and we had a big hurricane. We did have a chance to speak with workers who were here who say they are taking advantage of the low water levels to do maintenance on the boat ramp, which is a reminder that the only open public boat ramp at this time is boat ramp 17. I would recommend if you're going to go, go very early and then whenever you're going to come out, I'd recommend going out at about 3.30 or 4 before you beat the rush. And if fishing is your thing, Painter says Canyon Lake is still the perfect spot. Especially if you have a, you know, let's say a kayak that is, you know, set up for fishing, which I've seen a lot out there. There are a couple of my friends do have those. Take them out there. You're going to have no problem. You're going to catch some good fish. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Let's check the roads with TransGuide. No rain in these shots. Uh, here's a look at I-10 at Crossroads uh, where things are moving, but pretty quiet at this time. I know it was quiet yesterday about this time, and then it got super busy out there. Yes, indeed. We had uh, yeah, traffic issues. And also, you're going to have to watch it with some of the rain this morning because we're starting to see some on the west side of town as well. And where a lot of places haven't had much, you know, it's the, the oil, the dirt on the road. So that makes it kind of slippery when this all gets started. But yeah, it is so great to see this. Plus, I mean, think about it, and I love wow. the cat caption here whereas I had to pinch myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming with these amazing temperatures. We stayed at 93 yesterday. Yes, that was amazing and plenty of clouds hanging around here. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we are looking out to Medical Center area. This is 10 heading out west and I can't tell. It almost looks like the road may be damp out there. The reflection of the uh, the headlights off a of 10. So again, do take it easy. This is what it looks like on radar as of right now. Of course, 
First thing you, you kind of look at is up here around Round Rock, that very, very heavy cell that's continuing to work its way off to the east, and so that's going to be affecting uh, College Station. Back out here further to the west, a lot of the heavy, heavy rain has moved out of northern Gillespie County, but as you can see, right that cell right there, that's the one that dumped even some small hail and some very heavy rain, and so that's why there is the flood advisory for northern uh, Gillespie County up until 630 this morning. A little bit closer into town, as you can see, so we were talking about. Yeah, it does look like over here just over by 10 and 410. Got a couple of showers there going out 10 in toward Leon Springs. Had those few lightning strikes up there right around uh, Bernie, and now that appears to have kind of settled down somewhat. Leon Springs, you're seeing some of these uh, showers, maybe even a couple of moderate showers as well, and pretty much covering the entire west side of town, even down around Lackland. We're getting a couple of okay showers around there and then further on down to the uh, the south we've got just a few more of these uh, just very light rain showers so this will continue through the rest of the morning everything sliding off to the east and then once that comes to an end we get somewhat of a break in the action then things are going to pick back up so throughout the morning hours. We've got that 20 30% chance for a few showers. Things start to taper off. We'll make it up to 87 at noon. It is going to be warmer today, so we will have a bit more in the way of sunshine, but then we'll see a few more showers trying to develop later on this afternoon and then especially going into tonight. So here's computer model, and as you can see, this one doesn't have a lot left over this morning, but by later on this afternoon, that's when things start to kind of fire up again late afternoon in toward dinner time. Some of these moving on in here and we're also going to have to watch out for a couple of models want to get another one of these clusters developing in the overnight hours into the wee hours of tomorrow morning. Then beyond that, we've got still the better chance of rain tomorrow night. So got some rain right now, lull in the action late this afternoon, more developing tonight as well. And then tomorrow, even during the day, few scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here, and then especially I think tomorrow night, I know we've been talking about football Friday night quite a bit. Have a rain jacket, have an umbrella with you because uh, we're still, you know, some models have things moving through a little bit quicker, some a little bit later, but there will be a few showers around the area. 92s over the weekend, one or two showers left over even Saturday and Sunday and kind of tapering off. Still the best chance of rain is going to be late tomorrow night and the next week back to the mid 90s hmm. and kind of shut off the faucet for next week. So <laughs> hopefully everybody gets some decent yeah. rain through the next couple of days. Yeah, we hope so. We'll just be prepared for Friday night football. Right. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 452 and 77 degrees for now. After the break, a look at some of the movies in theaters very soon and a big announcement from actress and singer Olivia Rodrigo. Hey, let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3086, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 8243, Fireball 3, Cash 5, 4, 6, 7, 17, 34, and Lotto Texas, 4, 8, 9, 14, 30, 34. Your Powerball numbers, 22, 30, 37, 44, 45, Powerball 18, Power Play 3. Good luck. Come with me to a seance. Spot the con I can't. It's an Agatha Christie mystery with a twist of horror. That's what to expect from the new movie, A Haunting in Venice, says James Pritchard, a producer on the film, and Christie's great-grandson and CEO of her estate. I think we have achieved what we set out to achieve, which is to create what I would call a valid, um, a faithful Agatha Christie experience within some aspects of the horror genre, but at the heart of it is a murder mystery and an Agatha Christie story. This is the third Christie adaptation directed by and starring Kenneth Branagh. Tina Fey, Kelly Riley, Michelle Yeoh, and more co-star. It's in theaters this weekend. Thank you so much. Taylor Swift and her many wins at Tuesday night's MTV Video Music Awards provided a ratings boost for the show, its biggest audience in three years, up 37% in total viewers from last year. That said, the show is watched by just 865,000 people on MTV. At its peak in 2011, the awards telecast drew an audience of 12.4 million. Olivia Rodrigo rocked the MTV VMAs, and soon she'll be rocking a city near you, announcing the Guts World Tour. It'll start in February in Palm Springs, with dates also in the UK, Canada, and Europe. Opening acts will include The Breeders and Pink Pantheris. And happy birthday today to entrepreneur and Shark Tank star Robert Herjavec. He's 61. 
And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Let's look out there with live cam starting at 77 degrees and I'm getting a little spoiled by the cooler temperatures. Uh, this is kind of like a South Texas fall and I don't have any complaints. Good morning. It is September 14th. Thanks for joining us today and we hope you had a good week so far and we hope you are enjoying all these nice temperatures, Mike. Yeah, you know, it's funny because we got so accustomed to being well up into the hundreds. Yesterday was 93, which was great. I'm not, you know, talking anything about that, but that's still three above normal. We are still well above normal right now by a good seven degrees. There are a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms in and around the area, which is great to actually <laughs> talk about and uh, the dew point stands at 69 so we do have a fair amount of humidity out there but at least it's getting squeezed out in the form of some rain we are going to be up to 95 later on today so we've got a little rain right now sort of a break in the action then it's going to start to pick back up later on this afternoon and especially going into the evening the aquifer dropped down four tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading but some of these showers and storms have dropped a little bit of rain not a whole bunch but some in the recharge zone so hopefully that helps out mold and ragweed are both on the low side so let's check out radar right now. We still do have some showers around the area. It is going to be somewhat of a damp commute here in and around town because, well, as you can see, we've got uh, some light rain here and there. The majority of it is well up to the north, even to the north of Austin. If you are heading up I-35 in north of Austin, you can see just a few of those uh, showers and some of those stronger thunderstorms up there, and that cluster continues to work its way to the east. So up there around College Station, they're going to be getting that. And then throughout a good chunk of Kendall County, we've got some pretty good showers, at, excuse me, uh, up there around Blanco County, my apologies, and you can see some of those cells that are moving right through 281. Now we've got this batch and already had a few thunderstorms move right through Leon Springs, Bernie area. Now a next little wave of sort of some moderate rain, but in and around most of town, as you can see, We've got these light showers that are moving on through. Steven's coming up in just a second, and I'm sure a lot of this is going to be showing up on Trans Guy. So once this moves on through here, though, then things are going to start to come to an end, and that's the, the lull we were talking about. Then we'll start to see some more rain fire up later on. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. Like I said, I have a feeling mold, though, will probably be going up when the updated count comes out. So some morning rain, then some mid 90s. Then we'll start to see a few more showers trying to develop late this afternoon, but then especially tonight. Now tomorrow, scattered storms, more especially late tomorrow into the evening hours and overnight. A couple of scattered uh, showers and thunderstorms both Saturday and even a few leftovers on Sunday will be in the low 90s. Let's hope everybody sees some nice rain through the weekend because then after that, more sunshine, mid 90s in through most all of next week. Closer look at the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, sir. You got some damp roads out there. It definitely is going to be a different commute today for drivers there, Mike. You know, one of the things that we think about whenever it rains, uh, sometimes that dirt and oil that builds up on the roadway. So if you have to head out the door in the next few minutes, be careful. Roads could be slippery. Take a look there at 35 at 37. The commutes moving without any trouble, but we are seeing something different. And those are those damp roads, as Mike mentioned. So again, if you plan on heading out the door in the next few minutes, just take it slow. No need to rush as you get your commute rolling this morning. Taking a look behind me, we're starting off pretty much also the same way. It's quite Quiet, but again, roads are looking a little bit damp, so just be on the lookout for that. Again, no need to rush if you're heading into town this early. We're almost 28 minutes across the board here. Pleasant drive, though. Pleasanton heading in from 37 northbound. You can have a that you can expect about a 28 minute commute. And the same goes for US 90 eastbound if you are heading in from Castroville. And that arrival from Lytle should be about 16 minutes along I-35 northbound. So we're enjoying these quiet and damp roadways for right now, but we are going to watch things closely. And you can see from these transguide cameras, the commute is maybe looking already a little bit busier out there. We'll keep a close eye on things and I'll have another update coming up a little later on. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. An off duty SAPD officer calls 911 and tells dispatch that a woman in his home was going to kill him. Now that officer has since been suspended after Bear County Sheriff's deputies who rushed to his home determined there was no threat and 
that the officer was just drunk. Now, case that obtained the body camera footage of the February 18th incident through an open records request. In the videos, deputies encounter SAPD officer Greg Jones, who keeps saying he feels unsafe with the woman in his home and that he wants it documented just in case something happens to him. They concluded that Jones was impaired and not in any danger. The gentleman here has been drinking in excess, believes that his girlfriend is out to or is out to get him but this is where it gets it, it gets weird because he basically states that uh, they didn't put hands on each other they didn't get physical he wants to make it documented that you know if anything happens it was her now city discipline records show that officer jones was suspended six days in july for violating SAPD rules, including being unfit to report to duty and for acts showing a lack of good moral character. Case that could find no record that Jones was criminally charged with making a false police report. The murder trial of a man accused of being the trigger man in a murder for hire plot continues today. Now, during yesterday's testimony, the jury heard how the victim, Mike Bettis, was found in February of 2019. SAPD officer Frank Lopez responded to a welfare check of a man lying near a roadway on the south side. Lopez described to the jury what he saw when he got to the scene. As I'm approaching, I'm looking for, you know, some type of breathing, uh, the rising and fall of his chest. Uh, I did not see that, and then when I approached closer, that's why I can see a pool of blood accumulating underneath the, the face of the victim. Now, his body camera footage from that night was also shown to the jury. Bettas was allegedly killed after Cantu's sister-in-law, Cristina Rodriguez, paid Cantu $500. Rodriguez and her husband, John Cantu's brother, Manuel Cantu, are also facing capital murder charges in this case, but have yet to go to trial. Testimony in John Cantu's trial will continue today. If he is found guilty, he is automatically sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And time is running out to avert what could be a first ever coordinated labor strike on the nation's big three automakers. ABC's Justin Finch with more on the 100,000 auto workers who could go on a strike by midnight. <laughs> This morning, what could be the calm before an historic simultaneous strike on the big three automakers? If called upon, we will be ready to do whatever it takes. Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis, the manufacturer behind Chrysler and Jeep, all trying to prevent up to 150,000 auto workers from walking off the job effective midnight Thursday. The union outlining plans to strike at individual U.S. auto plants at first, but also saying... An all-out strike is still a possibility. We're keeping all of our options open. United Auto Workers President Sean Fain addressing the rank and file, saying the union is making some headway in talks, but isn't budging on key demands, including a 40% wage increase over the next four years, arguing that's how much the CEOs have gotten since the last contract. The most recent SEC filings show all of the big three CEOs earned more than $20 million last year, with GM CEO Mary Barra topping the list at $29 million, roughly 362 times the average GM workers pay. The UAW also wants pension plans resurrected after they were eliminated for new hires during the financial crisis, retiree health care, and a four-day work week, which Ford CEO Jim Farley calls impractical. We, we can't have a sustainable industry working four days a week. Auto industry analysts warning a strike could hit consumers hard. However it ends will almost assuredly result in yet higher prices for cars. And the time now is 5.08 and 76 degrees for now. So he's a small horse, but he's making a big difference here in South Texas. Coming up next, how Gus is helping people with special needs. And let's look out there with live cam. Not too bad. 76 degrees, like we said. Uh, it's kind of like a South Texas fall, y'all. We'll take it. I mean, 90s over 100 for sure. We're going to check in with all the details with Mike coming up.
Welcome back. It's 512 and standing at just three feet tall, a miniature horse named Gus is making a big difference. Our John Paul Badajoz reports originally that nobody wanted Gus, but now he has a home and a purpose helping those with special needs at Hope Reigns of Texas. Good. Whoopsie. That's okay. You Good. may not realize it, Easy but you're watching a young lady make progress one step at a time with a little help from a miniature horse. Yeah, Gus is a friendly little guy. He, he has never met a stranger, and that's one amazing thing about him that we love. It really lights up everybody's world. Gus is one of the newest team members at Hope Reigns of Texas, providing hippotherapy, meaning physical, occupational, or speech therapy, with the help of a horse. He joined the nonprofit in May of 2022, and he's already becoming a fan favorite. Gus, let go! Let's let go! Gus and the other horses at Hope Reigns of Texas work with children and adults who have special needs, as well as wounded warriors. And they're also having to find their balance. So their, their sensory, their neuromotor, their cognitive systems all having to work together while they're on top of this horse. Gus is too small to ride, but he offers therapy in other ways. So for us, I mean, you know, we can, we can pinch that nice and easy, slip it on right there and easy peasy. Braiding hair, clipping on these little bows, all that's working on their fine motor. And his stature is a strength when easing people into the world of horses. Very unique because his size is lovable. It's just, he, he makes you know it's okay to be little bitty. With all the love Gus gets now, it's hard to imagine that at one point, nobody wanted him. <laughs> Until Kyle Hackley rescued him from a Florida ranch and brought him to stay at Hope Reigns in Bolverde. I looked in those big brown eyes and I knew right then he was extraordinarily special. Now he provides care, calm, and companionship for those facing Yay! challenges. I think he likes people more than other horses sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> John Paul Barajas, ASAT 12 News. How cute. That Gus has a lot of personality. Well, time now is 514 and 76 degrees for now. We'll be right back. Some people just know that's not going to fit. Those are the people who know to choose Allstate. That's not going to fit. What's that? You need another four inches. Do you work here? No. I just saw you there, and I thought I'd save you the trouble. Nana. She's a human measuring tape, and she knows Allstate is the right fit for her. It's not going to fit. That's not going to fit. What? Steven. Some people just know. Well played. Well played, my friend. Those are the people who know you're in good hands with Allstate. Wanna leave works all day, so I can keep working my magic. Just wanna leave. 12 hours of uninterrupted pain relief. Aleve, who do you take it for? And for fast topical pain relief, try Aleve X. Ask Sherwin Williams and save big during the four-day super sale. Get 40% off paints and stains with sale prices starting at $26.69. Hurry, it's only September 15th through the 18th. Shop online or at your neighborhood Sherwin Williams store. Welcome back. It's 519 and we're just giddy over here with the, you know, with the temperatures. No kidding. Oh, yeah. And a little bit of rain, but then again, the dirt the, and the oil. I mean, we talk about this all the time. Every time we go a uh, period without rain, that's when that dirt and that oil builds up. And so it makes the road slippery when it rains. And that's why we tend to see a lot of crashes out there. So just take it easy. A lot of these trans guide cameras that I'm looking at this morning uh, show the commutes a little bit busier, uh, more so than what we've seen over the last few days. So I would say our morning is still quiet, but we have a lot more going on out of the roadways in terms of traffic. Uh, just check out some of these shots. 1604 at Kitty Hawk roads look a little damp out there. We're keeping a close eye on all the roadways along I-10, 35, anywhere people are traveling this morning. We are going to watch it very closely, but it looks like 1604 Marbach. It looks like there may have been some uh, droplets that were seen on the trans guide camera. I'll see if we can get back to that shot here in the next few moments, but let's get you to our map. I'm not spotting any other issues at this hour. Again, very quiet, but we still have a lot to look forward to, especially overnight.
right. We do have a 1604 North expansion project that's going to ramp back up and just keep this in mind. Uh, we are going to see this segment here uh, under construction up until Saturday, September 16th, but that work again begins at nine in the evening and the goal here is that it will, it will wrap around five in the morning. So if you are traveling through the area, here's what you can expect. The loop 1604 westbound exit ramp to the frontage road and as well as the I-10 intersection will be closed during that time. But uh, I know it's a lot of information. As always, you could scan this QR code, takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. There is a full article of what is happening along Loop 1604 and all the closures you can expect over the next few years. And yes, I did say years, but I want to see if we can get it back here on this Transguide camera here, guys, because we do have uh, what looks like to be some uh, rain that's coming down there. Maybe light rain, Mike. What do you think? You can see it right there in the uh, the street lights. Yeah, and that's going to continue for next couple hours, obviously, depending on where you are. First of all, everybody's loving to be outside. Perfect weather to be outside. It is just so nice in the afternoons. It is going to be a little bit hotter today, though. More on that in a second. All right, over there at uh, the medical center, this is 10 heading out northwest. Again, it does look like there's a sheen on the road with some of this light rain that has been falling. So as you can see, all of these uh, light little showers moving on through the area, pretty much sliding off to the east to northeast. And let's zoom in just a little bit more. And you can see right through uh, downtown right here, we've got these uh, showers that are moving on through over by the AT&T Center. So all the major highways in and around the area, 281, 35, 10. You're getting a little bit of this light rain. Same thing heading off to the northwest, out past Jefferson High School, Alamo Heights High School, the airport, a little bit on the damp side, and then all all the way up in through the northern portion of Bear County. We've got some of these showers and a little bit more up there around the, the rim and even into northern Bear County where we've got this, uh, well, kind of these, we'll call them some moderate showers here that are moving through just north of Timberwood Park, just past Fair Oaks Ranch and sliding up to the north. And so this will continue on, like I said, for the next, uh, say, hour, but there is the, uh, the trailing edge of that off there to the west and there's nothing else out there to the west at all. The heaviest rain is well up there to the north of us. So we've got these few showers around here this morning. It's going to make for a damp commute. Roads will definitely be on the wet side. Like Steve was talking about, not really a lot of rain to wash off all the dust and oil. So it is going to be slippery out there. We'll still continue maybe a few leftover showers. Then as we approach the latter portion of the morning commute in toward the seven, eight o'clock hour and then we're going to be up to 87 degrees today at noon. Now, rain chances start to get going a bit more later on this afternoon, and then especially going into tonight. We are going to be up to 95 degrees later on. So here's the computer model, and by late this afternoon, here's a few more of those showers and storms that are going to be popping up into tonight. We're also going to have to watch out for another cluster of storms that develops then in the overnight hours. Then we go into tomorrow, long-range computer model. This is the one that kind of slow has a slower uh, solution as far as when the uh, the actual heavier line of rain is going to be moving on through here it keeps it into the overnight hours but it's still I think we're gonna have to be on the lookout for some of these showers hanging around the area for tomorrow night for football tomorrow night so the forecast today we make it up to 95 so it is going to be a bit warmer than the past couple of days and a few more showers going to develop later on in the late afternoon evening hours tomorrow scattered showers in and around the area throughout the day especially late Later, and then tomorrow evening overnight into Saturday. One or two left over here or there on the weekend, 92, and then back to the mid 90s and sunshine next week. But at least mid 90s next week. I mean, that's better than right. the triple digits. I we've mean, been we're seeing. still going to be five degrees on average above really? normal hmm. in eight hundreds, though. So we'll that's take that. True. Okay, mm -hmm. South Texas fall. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Time now 524 and 76 degrees for now. A closer look at Leonardo DiCaprio's next film and Jessica Chastain garners a new prize. Rick Domagella will have the details after the break in today's Hollywood Minute. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, zero, eight, six, fireball four, daily four, eight, two, four, three, fireball three, catch five, four, six, seven, 17, 34, lotto Texas, four, eight, nine, 14, 30, 34, and your Powerball numbers, 22, 30, 37, 44, 45, Powerball 18, Power Play 3. Good luck. Son, I got a question. You like women? 
That's my weakness. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio faces a moral dilemma in his latest film. This is a closer look at Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon, which follows one man caught between the power struggle over oil in 1920s Oklahoma. The drama hits theaters October 20th. Jessica, right here, please. Jessica Chastain scores another honor. The Oscar-winning actress will receive the Golden Icon Award at this year's Zurich Film Festival. Chastain joins previous honorees like Glenn Close, Hugh Grant, and Diane Keaton. Have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Basically, I'm living that movie right now, which is how I know there's going to be a murder tonight. Kiernan Shipka time travels to stop a masked murderer. This is a sneak peek of the horror comedy Totally Killer, which finds a teenager teaming up with a younger version of her mom to prevent a series of killings. The Bloody Flick arrives October 6th on Amazon Prime Video. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Good morning. It's Thursday morning and it is 531 and starting your day in the 70s, not too bad. And, you know, going up to the 90s is also not too bad after this brutal summer that we've had. Hi, welcome back. It is Thursday, September 14th. Uh, happy Thursday, guys. Happy yes, Thursday. indeed. Yeah, we made it. All right. Uh, we have some rain out there. We're going to talk about that in a second. First of all, one month from today, you know what happens? October 14th. 14th. It is the annular eclipse of the sun. Oh, yeah. So I know we're just thinking about next year, the total eclipse. And this is where you're going to see the, the ring around the sun. And that will happen right here in town oh, on nice. that Saturday morning late. Yeah, so that's already, right. Justin already, put that in his calendar. Yeah, we're already right. kind of planning <laughs> planning for that. So and you might want to if you want to uh, kind of check it out, you need special glasses, right? You have to have to watch it with special glasses. Sunglasses do not work, so you have to get the ones that are approved for that. Now, of course, we're going to continue to talk about this over the next month as it approaches and then, of course, for next April as well. All right, we've got some damp roads out there. 10 this is the medical center looking out to the uh, west and northwest. So we've had a few of these light showers that have moved on through the area. 76 right now, so we have dropped down a couple of degrees in the past hour. Still six above normal, but not bad. Humidity is up there thanks to some of this rain at dew points at 71 right now. And looking at radar, well, look at that big, huge cluster of storms that are going through College Station. We did have some heavier ones up around northern Gillespie County earlier this morning, and that prompted a flood advisory just to the north of Fredericksburg with some of that uh, that heavier rain that moved through there. And that flood advisory up there is in effect up until 630 this morning. And here in town, as you can see, we do have some of these uh, just light scattered showers. Everything is continuing to work its way off to the east. Still a few stragglers on the uh, the back side of things, but as you can see, it's starting to come to an end over there, uh, even on the west side of Bear County. But we still have a few more, especially up to the north. If you're going up 281 in toward Hollywood Park, up toward Balverde, Garden Ridge area, and uh, even in towards Smithson Valley. Some of these uh, leftover showers up there. These will continue to work their way off to the east. Obviously, it's going to be coming to an end. Some of the rain will later on in the next, well, depending on where you are, but it's all going to be moving on out of here. We get lull in the action, then it's going to be picking back up. Mold, ragweed are both on the uh, low side. So this morning, we're going to have some of these uh, showers. A couple of storms are possible, but primarily that's going to be well up to the north of us. 75 is where we're going to be bottoming out, and the rain will continue to kind of taper off, lull in the action midday. Then a few more storms are going to start to uh, kind of kick back in here late this afternoon in toward dinner time. 95 for a high temperature, so it will be warmer than yesterday. Yesterday we were at 93. So that's not bad where we've been most of the uh, the summer. One or two of those storms, more of those storms then later on tonight. And then we've got the better chance of rain coming on in here tomorrow, especially late tomorrow. Details on that. Closer look at the weekend coming up. Traffic Authority. All right. Wet roads causing any problems out there? Not yet, Mike. Uh, we're watching things closely, but a big problem spot as usual. 281 at Hildebrand. Whenever we see those damp roads out there, this is an area where we tend to see a problem occur. But it, a lot of times it's because folks aren't slowing down before they approach that curve. And remember, slow down before you see that. And right now, drivers aren't experiencing too much trouble, but it's another area I'm watching right here in town. You can see the roads have a sheen or a glisten there out, out there this early in the morning. 
be on the lookout. Uh, no need to rush as you get your morning commute rolling here because we're not seeing any issues out on the roadways. We're just seeing some of those damp roads. Taking a look at our map, it's pretty quiet and we are seeing a little bit more traffic always expected minute by minute as we get closer to 6 a.m. So we'll watch those areas closely, but quick look at your travel times. That journey from Bernie along I-10, I would say it's a 24 minute commute, so no need to rush. 281 southbound heading in from Boulevard is a 25 minute drive time for anyone that's heading down here this early and a 24 minute commute along 35 south heading in from New Braunfels. So these areas aren't really experiencing any too much any trouble, I should say, with delays. But again, we're going to have to keep a very close eye on these areas throughout the morning stuff because that's a spot where we tend to see a lot of crashes. So just remember, slow down before you approach any curb out on the roadway. Thank you, Stephen. And they tried to take money and run, but a group of robbers didn't quite succeed. Our Katrina Weber is live on Nacogdoches Road near Higgins Road, where the robbery happened a little more than an hour ago. And Katrina, what exactly went wrong for them? Well, based on what police say, it seems like those robbers didn't get everything they came for. Officers told us that they actually dropped some of the money as they ran off from this convenience store, this quick trip. Uh, this is where the robbery happened right around 4 o'clock this morning. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see things were very different at that time from how they are now. Police flooded into the area. I counted no less than about a half dozen uh, patrol cars around the store when we arrived. Uh, police say that uh, the clerk told them that three people, three men in hoodies, came in, pointed a gun at him, and took off with some of the cash. But again, those robbers ran off, dropping some of that cash along the way. Uh, we assume that police collected it. It was all gone out of sight by the time we got here, as were the robbers. Police did search the area, but they did not find them. And as far as we know, the clerk wasn't injured, but likely is shaken up by what happened this morning, right around 4 o'clock this morning. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, a man shot multiple times in his chest after a fight with another man on the city's west side. Now, San Antonio police say the shooting happened just after 1130 last night. They say a man got into a fight with another man and was shot multiple times in his chest. Now, police do not have a description of the suspect. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Frustration from San Antonio Police Chief William McManus after six officers were injured in the line of duty. Now this morning, other law enforcement officers are feeling the same way, asking for a change. But our officers are out there at risk every single day dealing with these violent criminals and we need help. Now for some time, there has been many county law enforcement who are not happy that drug cases or cases against violent criminals are rejected and the suspects are freed. So District Attorney Joe Gonzalez explained in a recent town hall meeting that cases need to be strong enough to take before a judge or jury that are beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, Converse Police Chief Bobby Lane says law enforcement from across Bear County want to be invited to the table to come up with a plan forward. The thing is, is this, is that we know crime is a problem. It's there. Um, there's no hiding it. We see it every day. We're seeing it in the media every single day. There's shootings going on. Uh, people at risk. We need to sit down, I think, and I think at this point, it's time to sit down. The district attorneys, the judges, you know, the police chiefs, the county attorneys, all sitting down at the table and having a conversation about this. Like, what are we going to do to change this? Uh, county Judge Peter Sakai said there's a meeting planned in the next few weeks to discuss a possible fix, but it has not been made clear yet who will be invited to that meeting and if it will be private or public. In your morning headlines in Russia, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un continues his visit this morning. Today he is expected to see Russian military drills. Now CNN's Will Ripples explains how the Russian President Vladimir Putin has been making it clear of what he's wanting from North Korea. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin becoming allies against the West. We are certain that the Russian people and its military will emerge victorious in the fight to punish the evil forces that ambitiously pursue hegemony and expansion. Putin and Kim vowing stronger ties, a long-standing strategic relationship, joining forces to find a way around crippling U.N. sanctions, leaving the U.S. and the West with even less leverage. Kim's sister, Kim Yo-jong, often seen by his side, the second most powerful person in North Korea, attending to every detail. Something new in 2023? 
for the first time ever, North Korea launched two short-range ballistic missiles while the supreme leader was out of the country. In the front line of anti-imperialism and independence, I will always be standing with Russia. I'm using this opportunity to make it clear. Back in 2018, Kim and Trump were discussing a deal to denuclearize North Korea. Can you invite Kerry Kim to the White House? Absolutely, I will. Giving up nukes to build beachfront condos. How bad is that, right? It's great. But it wasn't meant to be. Five years later, Kim and Putin are flipping the script. Denuclearization is dead. The U.S. cast aside for a new partnership with the Russian military. The Pentagon's watchdog is establishing a new team in Ukraine to monitor ongoing U.S. security assistance to Kyiv. According to Defense Department Inspector General, the U.S. began work in Ukraine in late August and additional personnel are expected to arrive by the end of September. The establishment of the new team comes at a critical time for Ukraine aid. The president and other senior administration officials have vowed to continue U.S. aid for as long as it takes. A federal judge in Texas has ruled that a regulation intended to preserve the Obama-era Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program is unlawful. Last year, the administration moved to preserve the program, which protects undocumented immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as children and released a rule to codify the policy into federal regulation. Now, the order doesn't impact current beneficiaries of that program. The water levels at Canyon Lake are at a record low, and the businesses in the area are drying up with it. Sam Painter's business has called Canyon Lake home for more than two decades. Now, despite the record low water levels, he says the lake is still open for business, so he wants you and your family to come out. You can still come out to Canyon Lake. You can have a great time. You can come out and barbecue with your family. You can hit a kayak. You can hit a paddleboard. You can come out here with a captain boat without a problem and still be safe. And just a reminder that if you plan to bring your boat to Canyon Lake, Ramp 17 is the only one open right now. And the time now is 542 and we're at 75 degrees for now. Lyft has announced a new feature to its app, still ahead how it's designed to make women feel safer. After the break, Google is laying off hundreds of people in its recruitment division what Google officials are saying about that decision. And looking out there with a live cam, hey, we're starting in the 70s again, we'll take it. And going up to the 90s, and the chance of rain has everyone excited here at KSET. We're gonna check in with Mike about that very soon. And welcome back, it's 545. Google is laying off hundreds of people in its recruitment division. A Google spokesperson said they continue to invest in top engineering and technical talent while meaningfully slowing the pace of overall hiring. Google did not give the exact number of layoffs, but it will affect a few hundred people globally. The affected employees will get severance offers and other benefits. Lyft has announced a new feature that allows women a non-binary riders to choose a preference for drivers of the same gender. Now, the service is called Women Plus Connect and is rolling out in the coming months. The ride-hailing giant believes it will help women and non-binary people feel more confident using Lyft and encourage more women to sign up to be drivers. Halloween is still many weeks away, but a lot of businesses are already cashing in on spooky season, including Starbucks. So the coffee giant is out with this year's Halloween drinkware lineup. Now it includes new tumblers, cold cups, mugs, and more. Hitting shelves this month at participating U.S. locations for a limited time, costing anywhere from $15 to $30. How cute. I'm a huge Halloween fan. Time now, 546 and 75 degrees for now. Let's talk out there with Trans Guy. It appears there may be an accident out there at I-10 at Culebra. Of course, our Stephen Cavazos is keeping a close watch on this, and we're going to be checking in with him very soon. 10 minutes till 6, and we already have our first issue out on the roadway. Let's get a look at that crash here at I-10. This is the upper level at Culebra Road. We know at least three lanes are blocked at this time, and we have uh, first responders that are out there on the scene, and you can see traffic's moving through the area pretty slowly, and we are seeing that, uh, again, three lanes are blocked at this hour. No word yet on what was the cause behind that crash, but I'm sure those wet roads did not help anything and, and by any bit, but uh, it looks like we have more flashing lights that are arriving to the scene. This crash was reported just after uh, 6 
5 5 30 this morning. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on it, especially now that we have traffic moving through the area uh, just before six. You see that buildup along the eastbound lanes of I 10 just before Culebra Road. That's where you're going to start to see the slowdowns in those lanes that are blocked out there. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that throughout the morning. But overall, that is something that we expect to see whenever the roads are a little bit wet. We have that dirt and oil that builds up out there, which could lead to some crashes because they make the roads a little bit slippery. So again, just be on the lookout if you if you have to travel through that area. I want to jump back to this shot at Transguide. Again, this crash is slowing folks down. Three lanes are blocked. I'm going to continue to watch the roads close. Closely, but as always, you guys got to make sure you do the same thing. Roads are wet. You take it easy out there. No need to rush. I know it's a lot of buildup for almost six o'clock. Yeah, and, and, and again, I, one of the things you see is that the roads look like they have that uh, that sheen or they look yeah, damp. Yeah, I mean, hey, that may have caused it. Pretty mm -hmm. much all sure. the roads in and around town have or are still getting a little bit of rain are, are on the damp side. So that's going to be the case all morning long. Love this picture. The hummingbird feeder and look who took it over. Got some bees out there. Get a little, uh, little something to sip on. Big and bees. yeah, it's great. It's been a while for the bees. They've been gone, but uh, yeah, it's great to see them around because they pollinate all the plants out there. All right. Uh, speaking of wet roads, as you can see, 10 heading out uh, toward the hill country, out medical center and out to the uh, north and west. It is definitely on the wet side, so you want to keep that in mind and drive very carefully. Look at the uh, kind of the, the broad picture here, somewhat zoomed in. Let me uh, click a button over here very quickly. And we do still have some of these light showers that are moving off to the east to northeast, but then also notice how they are starting to come to an end. So where there was a uh, an OK shower in and around, say, Bernie and uh, Leon Springs, that has now come to an end. And this all continues again to work its way off to the east to uh, to northeast. Now, a little bit wider picture. Got some pretty good thunderstorms there up to the uh, north and northeast up around College Station as of right now. And then just a few little uh, leftovers down here around Divine in and around town a little bit closer it's pretty much now confined to the eastern portion of bear county san antonio going up 35 in toward this is always kind of one of those trouble spots there obviously 35 so you want to uh, watch it with some of that uh, those wet roads and that's going to stay damp heading up in toward new Braunfels throughout the rest of the morning so temperatures mid 70s stay pretty steady this morning then rain chances come to an end. We get a lull in the action, maybe a left or a little sprinkle here and there. Then we get up to 95 today and rain chances are going to pick back up late this afternoon with some of these showers and thunderstorms going into tonight. We'll have to watch out for a cluster of storms that's going to move through here then in the overnight hours sort of like what we've been experiencing. So here's what's going on. We've got somewhat of this tranquil, almost straight west to east pattern right now, but we will get a little bit of a push from the north, and that's going to push the better chance of rain in through here with this big trough there around the Great Lakes. So that's why we have the enhanced chance of rain tomorrow night and then somewhat leftovers on Saturday and Sunday. After that, we get almost the influence of the high again for much of next week. So that cuts off any rain back into the mid 90s for next week. What's encouraging, though, is look at how another big trough is going to be developing, dropping in out of Canada in through the Great Lakes. So hopefully then that brings us something by the end of next week and going into the uh, the last week of September. So just got to wait and see with that. But at least we're getting into this more fallish pattern, more kind of roller coaster action with upper level steering winds in the atmosphere. So that's always a good thing. Got a few more showers developing later on this afternoon. 95 high temperature, 92s then tomorrow through the weekend. Best chance of rain is still going to be tomorrow night. Been saying all along for football, have an umbrella and a rain jacket handy. Be so, prepared. Yeah, because the timing's still a little. Is it going to come later? Going to be during the evening hours, mm -hmm. and then we will uh, be back to more sunshine mid 90s next week. Yeah, well, for the football players, it might be you know welcome the right. rain, but you know for everybody else in the stands, yes, Plus, prepare. It, in my opinion, if it was on real grass, that'd be a lot more fun. <laughs> yes, a good time oh, the good old on the football field. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Time now: 5:55 and 75 degrees for now. We'll be right back. Until you need one or know someone who does, you may not really understand why they call organ sharing the gift of life. Hear from some of those who live to tell their story, coming up on KSAT 12 News at noon.
Right now on GMSA, San Antonio police are investigating a pair of shootings from overnight. What we've been able to learn so far, plus. The United Auto Workers Union preparing to go on strike by midnight tonight if they can't reach a new labor agreement with the big three automakers. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the details from Washington. And outside with live cam, whoa! There's like wet stuff falling from the sky. It's all <laughs> over the streets. What is that? Is that rain? Yeah, that is rain. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I know. How much fun is going to be on the commute to work this morning? Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Thursday. It is September 14th. And yes, we are very excited about rain and rain chances. Did you get rain on the way to work? So I'm driving to work mm -hmm. and there's this little lever on your steering wheel. You push it up and these little rubber things go flat. <laughs> the, across oh, the wipers that we yeah, haven't like, used wow, in such look a long time. Okay, those are cool. What is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It, it's funny how excited we are, first of all, of having temperatures in the <laughs> mid 90s. Yeah. Which most people are going, what? And then having a little bit of rain. Uh, this is not a, I'm not looking this gift horse in the mouth at all, oh. but I mean, it's not any sort of a drop breaker. It's kind of nuisance on the roads, but yes, it is beautiful to see. Best news is too, though, we have more rain chances. That's good awesome. in the forecast and better rain chances as we go into uh, tomorrow. And you look at uh, I-10 over there, <clears throat> excuse me, by the medical center heading out to the northwest. Yep, roads are damp. Looks like maybe everybody's playing nice and, and slowing down just a bit with some of those uh, damp roads out there. Big cluster of thunderstorms up there just to the south of College Station and around Cedar Park. Did have some heavy rain, still have a uh, flash, or excuse me, a, um, a flood advisory, beg your pardon, up in northern parts of Gillespie County up for the next half hour till 630 because had some pretty good cells move through there. In and around town, it is looking like a lot of the rain is now starting to come to an end. We still have some of this on the northeast side, up 35. So on your commute coming in and heading out 35, you're still going to run into some of this rain. Same thing with 10. Just a few leftover little sprinkly showers there off to the west. So this will come to an end. Then we see a lull in the action. Then we have more rain chances later on today. 75 right now here in town. 70 Bernie Stage, Bandera, Comfort, Kerrville, and even upper 60s in parts of right around Lost Maples. Got a bunch of humidity out there. Obviously, the moisture in the ground now is adding to that. And it is going to be a warmer day today than what we had the past couple of days. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. I have a feeling mold's going to be going up when the updated count comes out in about an hour and a half or so. Temperatures are going to hold steady now throughout the rest of the morning and we will see some sunshine mixed in as well. 87 at noon uh, got that 10% chance for a shower in there. Just any leftovers little stragglers here and there. Then once we get into the afternoon hours later in the afternoon, rain chances will start to go up. We will hit a high temperature of 95 degrees by late afternoon dinner time and then tonight and especially late tonight. We'll have a better chance for some rain. The best chance is still going to be tomorrow. We'll talk about that sorted out. Is it going to affect Friday night football? And what about the weekend? All those details coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen. Rain causing problems? Yep, uh, we are seeing it here at I-10, the upper level there at Glebeter. Let's get another shot at Transguide. It doesn't appear that we've seen a lot of progress out there. The only thing that has likely changed may just be that traffic still down to one lane, and we're seeing a little bit more of that pick up now that we're in the 6 a.m. hour. Multiple first responders are on the scene of this crash, and it's in a pretty busy spot, guys. This is along I-10 eastbound, so folks that are trying to navigate and maybe get to the downtown area, you're may, you may have some delays this early in the morning. Taking a look at our map, we have a reflection of the yellow that's on our screen, which is never a good sign. That means we're seeing that slow down and you can see it right behind me on from the trans guide cameras. We'll watch closely and as always hope everyone's doing OK. But now that we've entered a pretty busy hour, we're starting to see other issues pop up. This slowdown has been reported earlier. It was detected between Judson Road and Loop 1604 along I-35 northbound. But keep this in mind, a lot of road work taking place out there along 35 for the NEX project. So that's not expected to wrap anytime soon. But I imagine with some of the rain that we've seen in the wet roads could make the commute a little bit tricky for folks. Giving you a wide look at our map now, though, a little bit more relief here. We have some quiet roads. Yes, they are damp, but we're not seeing any other issues that are reported. If you are traveling into San Antonio this early in the morning, you are still in the green from Seguin. So take your time, please. 29 minutes at this hour, 33 along 87 northbound if you're heading in from Lavernia, and it's about a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville. But I want to get it back here again. We do have this scene that's been uh, going on for about 30 minutes or so here along I-10 eastbound at the upper level. We'll watch it closely and let's hope we'll have a better update coming up a little bit later on. David.
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man fighting for his life after being shot in the back. It happened on the city's west side. San Antonio police say it happened just before 1030 on Wiseman Boulevard near 1604 in SeaWorld. A man in his 20s shot in his back right below his neck. However, SAPD says the man had latex gloves on and was possibly breaking into vehicles. Witnesses saw a car drive away after the man was shot. Right now, police don't have any information about a suspect, though. Also near this morning, a man was shot multiple times in the chest after a fight with another man. It happened just after 1130 last night on the city's west side. Now, police tell us that a man got into a fight with that other man and was shot multiple times. The man who was shot was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Right now, police do not have a description of that suspect. In your morning headlines, the convicted murderer who escaped a Pennsylvania prison revealing how he avoided capture for two weeks. Authorities say Danilo Cavalcante admitted during a four-hour questioning period that law enforcement got very close to him. Officers almost stepped on him three times during the manhunt. He survived on watermelon and by drinking water from a stream. He said on multiple occasions, law enforcement officers almost stepped on him. We were only five or six feet away. Cavalcante told authorities his end game was to carjack someone and get to Canada using a rifle he stole from a homeowner days earlier. However, he was detected by a plane with a thermal imaging camera. Meanwhile, time is running out to avoid a massive strike against the nation's big three car makers. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, over 100,000 auto workers could strike by midnight tonight if they don't get a last minute deal. <laughs> This morning, what could be the calm before an historic simultaneous strike on the big three automakers? If called upon, we will be ready to do whatever it takes. Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis, the manufacturer behind Chrysler and Jeep, all trying to prevent up to 150,000 auto workers from walking off the job effective midnight Thursday. The union outlining plans to strike at individual U.S. auto plants at first, but also saying... An all-out strike is still a possibility. We're keeping all of our options open. United Auto Workers President Sean Fain addressing the rank and file, saying the union is making some headway in talks, but isn't budging on key demands, including a 40% wage increase over the next four years, arguing that's how much the CEOs have gotten since the last contract. The most recent SEC filing show all of the big three CEOs earned more than $20 million last year, with GM CEO Mary Barra topping the list at $29 million, roughly 362 times the average GM worker's pay. The UAW also wants pension plans resurrected after they were eliminated for new hires during the financial crisis, retiree health care, and a four-day work week, which Ford CEO Jim Farley calls impractical. We, we can't have a sustainable industry working four days a week. Auto industry analysts warning a strike could hit consumers hard. However it ends will almost assuredly result in yet higher prices for cars. Both sides now watching the clock. Ford, GM, and Stellantis releasing statements saying they're remaining optimistic about talks. Ford and GM noting their latest offers to the UAW include more paid time off and significant wage increases, though just nearly half of the 40% pay hike the union wants. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And before we go to break, high gas prices are here as drivers get ready for the weekend. And they're also up across the country. So people we spoke with here in Bear County say they are not happy about it. Just my budget. You know, it's a shame I have to pay more. I wish that they would uh, go down. Groceries, gas, um, cost of living, just everything in general is just really getting out of hand. Yep, it adds up. So how does Bear County compare to the state and national average for gas? Well, AAA reports that as of today, the average price for gas in the county is slightly above the statewide average. But for the U.S., gas is averaging about $3.85 a gallon. It is now 609 and 75 degrees. And still to come, Amazon is using AI to help people sell their stuff. How it could work for you, that's coming up before 630. And also coming up, a small horse, you see him there, making a big difference here in South Texas. We're going to show you how he was rescued and is paying it forward with a new purpose.
Yes, we hope we can see that story. Uh, the horse is named Gus, and Gus has a lot of personality, David. Yes. <laughs> Looking out there with live cam, we're glad to start in the 70s. And we're glad we're only going to reach the 90s today. And of course, David, we're excited about that rain. It's beautiful out there if you want to really know about it, but slow down.